This is the Dvar Torah on the Megillah, yes. Esther Amalka was tremendously Moser Nefesh. She really gave of herself. Think about it. She didn't know that Achish would accept her. And she literally fasted for three days and three nights because she said, listen, I wasn't called to come to the king. And it's not like, oh, you know, you just can't enter the palace whenever you feel like it. You don't do that. And the princess does. make a difference. It's, it's, a, not like, it's not like a husband and wife, but they're so cool. Right? It's a king. You, you king, there's certain rules. You don't just come in the king's palace. Okay? So she, she knew that there's a law. It says, Achal, Achat Dato Lahamit. There's one law. If you're not called to the king and you enter his room, put spot. You enter, who do you think you are? I know, right? Doesn't make a difference. Because keep in mind, the king had not only, you see, there was queens, but there was also many concubines. And you cannot just come and enter and go when you feel like it. It's Pilegish, basically. You know what Pilegish is? It's like a Hagar. Someone who's not, not the main wife. Uh, had many of those. Like Esther was his main uh, wife. Okay, think of the uh, think of the emails, David, right? Think of David, you know, uh, David Rachel and uh, Rachel and uh, Leah uh, were the main wives, and Bill and Zilpah were the yeah, yeah. also married, but not to the same degree. Yeah. Some, some say like that. Some say they were mamash married. Anyways, it wasn't so simple. Put it, you're asking a question right now. Why? Why was it? Uh, the that way. It was. It was like that. It was a very simple. You're not coming. You come into the king's palace without permission, and your life is on the line. And she knew that. And as a matter of fact, she was going to be. Run, she she was so close to being killed when she entered the palace that it's only because Chesverish put the scepter out. She was able to grab it because they were like trained animals, like ready to just pounce on somebody who entered there. So it doesn't make a difference. Oh, it's a queen, let her go. No, they were, they were, they were Mamash ready to kill her. And he stuck out the throne. They were, they, were, they, were, they were ready to like probably kill her with their spears. And he like literally like... He, he literally saved Esther by sticking out his golden scepter and she, she held it. That stopped him. Uh, and I have a question. The kids are... Uh, isn't it like, um, uh, like, like she tried to kill herself? Like, like oh, she, 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 she risked, she risked, her, she risked life, her life. She, she did risk her life. She, she wasn't committing suicide, but it could be that she was gonna be she was gonna be killed. Yeah, but at the same time, she knew she was risking her Jacob, life. Jacob has a good point. This was not only for her own her own Hatzalah, it was for Hatzalah of Kalisrol. So therefore, folks keep talking about. By the way, very, 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 very big questions come up. Why was Esther allowed? You're basically asking that. Why was Esther permitted to do such a thing? Normally, you're asking, you cannot put yourself into a uh, suffix. So kind of right. You can't go uh, jumping off a building and maybe I'll die, maybe I'll live, right? Mm. Maybe I'll probably live. It's, it's you it's can't do that. It's the only chance they have. It's the only chance Correct. they have. Here it's, here it's the fact that it's not only the act. They, they're basically going to die anyways unless you do this. So it was almost like... But she was very scared. But it was, but it was a good reason to, to make, right? make make no make no doubt about it. She had, she now, had one of the things was, one of the things that she had here was that Mordechai... At, before this happened, Mordecai, when she was in the palace, after she was appointed to queen, you, if you recall, if you look at the story, we didn't learn it inside, but I'm sure everyone knows the story already, and you could, when you see it tonight and tomorrow, you'll see it, that Mordecai told her, do not tell that you are a Yehudi. Do not tell him yeah. that you are a Jewish woman. And that kept bugging uh, Akashver. She wanted to know, where are you from? Where are you from? You're so beautiful. I, I've never seen anyone like... Where, tell me what nation you're from. He thought, he, 127 provinces. He did not know which country you're from. He couldn't figure it out. And Mordechai told her, don't tell, don't tell. It was part of the plan, right? Couldn't she lie? Well, he yeah, didn't want, he didn't, he didn't want her to lie, lie and he didn't want her to tell because ultimately he was worried that he was worried that if she found, found out that she was from Yudi, then we will work against her. But at the same time... He, he wanted it to be used in a, at she the right was, time and place. She's gonna be in a stuck position. So don't tell. He didn't. He didn't want to know that there was a relationship between Mordechai and, and Esther. You know that they were. You know he was her uncle. You know what? He was her uncle. He didn't want to know that they disclose that information. So she she had to trust Mordechai big time. She really had to trust Mordechai that he would not do that. That, that you not to not to because keep in mind the king was every day when he was here. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you? This is a big person. Where are you from? Where are you want to find out? Not so easy to evade somebody like that. Didn't she say, like, I, uh, I'll tell you, like... Uh, Not so easy. If I'm asking you a question and you're like, 
You know, there's only so, so many times you can dodge a question. Not so easy. So she, every day she was evading the question and when she saw him. And she had to trust Mordechai, right? Now, Ahasuerus was very interested in finding out her, where she was from, but he was un, un, unsuccessful. One of the people, if you could scroll down, Rav, Rav Zalman Srotskin, one of the, one, one of the, the Bali Moser, asks, how is it that the king of the world he was the king of the most powerful 127 countries. He didn't have any intelligence so where she was from. I mean, come on. We know what's going on in Russia today. Why? Because we have spies. We have the intelligence. If you, if you read the news, there's, there's intelligence. Every country has spies planted and they know what the other person is doing. You know that, right? Yeah. It's, it's tricky, of course. It's a big risk. But every nation has intelligence, Michael. They have intelligence. It means that they... We have people, we know what Russia is going to do, we know what they're planning, or, that's, that's, that's part of being a, a, a nation, and you have to have, inter- you need spies, you hire. so he has a question, what, he didn't know, Achishver is the most powerful man in the world, he, didn't have, he couldn't find out that information, where Esther was from, he needed to ask her himself, I mean, come on, she shouldn't be any worse than, it shouldn't be any worse than like, you know, the United States today, which has, which has, you know, we have we have our intelligence and our spies and we can find that information. Right? So how come he never found out? That's the question, the kasha that Rav, that Rosalind Rav going to ask him. And he says, you know what? It must be that you see that Klai Yisrael had tremendous, tremendous Mr. Nefesh trade. You know what that trade was? They knew how to keep a secret. Because Mordechai said it was important. They didn't snitch. They didn't say they would only be. The, they wouldn't be the ones to reveal Esther's identity. If Mordechai said she this was, she has to keep the secret all the time. Not only did she have to keep it? Oh, everybody. Klai Yisrael couldn't spill the beans as well. Wow. Because if Haman or because of, or if Achishverosh went over to somebody else and say, Hey, tell me, where's this this, this lady here? You have an idea? Oh yeah, this is Esther. This is one of our people. She's, she's one of us. The whole, the whole thing would have been ruined. The whole it only worked because Klai Yisrael stayed together and they did not the reveal. It was a, and that was a key key contributor to the success of Esther, only because she revealed her identity. Right, it was right at the the pinnacle, well, right at the top, when she was about to. She was like, "By the way, you know where I'm from?" And she's like, "No, I don't know where you're from. Tell me where you're from." Oh, I'm actually from a nation that this guy here, this evil man, wants to destroy. Right, the Haman Haraza. Right. The point of the the of the Devar Torah was that her keeping quiet, but not only her. But the keeping the quiet of Kali Israel, the whole nation was silent, and they didn't tell, is a critical uh, part of this puzzle, which which helped to, which really helped end up being for the salvation of, of the Jews. And this is an important lesson for us as well, because, you know, we live in a generation where we just take out our phone and we take a picture and we text somebody and we're like, oh, you know what happened? Look at this! Whoa, look at what just happened! And we spread information so quickly, and. Sometimes it's a good thing, but sometimes it's not a good thing. Sometimes we have to have restraint. And just because you know something, doesn't mean you necessarily have to share it with everyone. Right? So there's such a thing as sniut. And then not, not sharing everything that you know with everyone, even though you might have information. Or you, yeah. Oh, you know what happened? Let me share you with this information. Or taking pictures and look, and did you see what this person did? Or did you hear about this person? Like, we don't have to be that person to be you know, jumping to share and, and spread that information so quickly with it, the latest scoop. So, so you're saying it's not good to do that? The Megillah teaches us that we have to have what's called restraint. You have to have self-control. And even though Klai Yisrael knew, they didn't tell, it wasn't right to tell her. Not everything that you know needs to be shared or broadcast with everybody. And the Purim, this Purim, he ends up here, we should share with each other but not necessarily everything about each other. You don't necessarily have to go sharing, oh, you see what this person did, and you see that. You don't have to share everything. That's a very important lesson. 